Hey guys, it's Big Dave here for Tales of Talara. That's right, Tales of Talara, and this is Warfronts back on the home channel. Yep, we have returned. TG and Rift will be shutting down at some point in the future, and instead of waiting for that channel to slowly die, I went ahead and brought Warfronts back to its original home, Tales of Talara, and I am super excited. I feel like a weight has been lifted, because even though I love doing stuff on TG and Rift, and obviously it's brought us a lot of subscribers here in the last 24 hours, uh, over to Tales of Talara. Uh, TGN Rift brought a lot of pressure with it because I was the only person there and people wanted more than I could offer them. And uh, I'm just a dude who wanted to make a show about a newbie learning to, to play PvP. And people wanted so much more from me because they wanted that Rift content. And uh, unfortunately, I could never convince anybody within TGN's infrastructure to seek out. Uh, any new Rift talent, and a couple of people that we did recruit ended up uh, quitting the game before they even made a video. So, uh, yeah, things are a little dire when it comes to Rift um, and TGN. Uh, well, even more so now that uh, I have left. Uh, we also had the amazing Togrim for a while, uh, but he left to go to Game Breaker, and uh, really at that point we just sort of fell apart. I tried to keep the community uh, moving as long as I could, but it just didn't happen. It was really unfortunate to see things go the direction that they did in TGN Rift, but at the same time, uh, as I said, I do feel a certain weight lifted off my shoulders as I return to my little corner of the internet to do my little thing, where I won't make any money and I'll get 10% as many views, but I really don't care, because I'm happy. Here you can see I'm standing in front of this festive Fey Yule hovel here, uh, Grandfather Frost in the background, sitting on his throne... And uh, we're pretty much just waiting for the queues right now. Uh, a little bit more of a queue story, as you guys uh, saw on my last TGN video. Uh, we are 25 minutes into the queue, so uh, if we don't see the queue pop before I stop recording this video, I'm going to shift over to my mage, where I know I can get a game at level 50. Uh, so this is my rogue level 32, specced into bard. I'm really trying to do some support uh, I want to kind of keep the show varied. I have one character who's at level 50 doing DPS specs, and I want to have another character who is trailing behind him in the lower levels doing support or other different sort of things. Uh, but it doesn't look like the Qs want to cooperate with me, so we'll give them another moment or two here, and then we will call it quits. If the Qs do pop, I might do a little live commentary. If they don't, then you will see a more or less standard sort of episode. So, uh... Just kind of twiddling my thumbs here, waiting, maybe, anything, no. And of course you can see my, my ultimate frustration that happens with this queue, uh, as you're looking in the upper right hand corner at the map, in the average wait on the queue, 30 seconds is the average wait for a Library of the Rune Masters. Yeah. If your average wait time is going to be that inaccurate, just don't even put it up there. Um, we're 26 minutes into a queue, that says I should have popped a, a, a Library of the Rune Masters in 30 seconds. Um, just don't put it up there. I don't know what technology is behind the algorithm that estimates how long it's going to take for, uh, for a Warfront to pop, um, but let's go back to the drawing board on that. And let's just remove that from the, uh, from the dialogue altogether. All right, guys, it does not seem that we are going to get a queue for my rogue, so uh, I am going to go ahead and pop over to my mage, where we will continue that Dis B uh, Fire Warlock spec uh, that I've been having some success with. I'm doing a hell of a lot more damage, uh, but I am dying a hell of a lot as well. So uh, Also, I'm just getting level 50 owned by a lot of people. Uh, I'm rank 1... Um, three quarters of the way, maybe to rank two. I've got all my rank one gear. I'm kind of ready to go to rank two gear. I've got enough, uh, enough of the uh, currencies required to kind of go right to rank two as uh, rank two gear as soon as I get rank two. Uh, so I'm kind of anxious to to keep playing. And uh, of course, my time is being sapped by the old republic. Uh, if you love MMOs, that's probably why you're playing Rift. And if you love MMOs, you are probably also looking at Star Wars The Old Republic. I am in on the pre-order, uh, early access, and I've been enjoying uh, the pants off that game. And I hope you guys are too. It's not really taking away from my rifting time because my rift time is very uh, set into very specific pockets of the week. Uh, so it's not taking away anything. I'm just dropping some of my other gaming time. Look at this guy getting in my shot. Grim Golden Eyes, the Ironclad, like, moving in here like you're just specifically trying to get in my shot. All right. 
you pose in there. All right. Okay, so, uh, well, guys, I, I, that's going to do We're going to give up on this queue. I'm going to go ahead and throw it to the action. That is going to be my mage in some random war front because I haven't even uh, recorded it yet. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Here we go, guys. We are joining this codex just in progress. It's just getting started. I popped in and uh, found that my team was up 2-1 to one and the codex was undecided. Uh, so I head towards the codex. Uh, but very quickly, the uh, the Defiance assault it. So uh, I decide I'm going to go ahead and try to go and, and back it up. And uh, and you'll see what happens. Uh, it kind of sums up my feelings and my experience in this entire uh, battle. Uh, so I start my rotation on this guy. I start to unload on him to try to do what I'm doing. And I'm doing okay, but then, boom, I'm dead just like that. Uh, you see, I kind of stop. It takes me a minute to actually hit respawn. I'm like, what the hell just happened? Um, in previous matches uh, at level 50, I haven't really gotten that feeling of of, of what everybody told me was going to happen. That, uh, oh, you're going to get your butt just handed to you. <laughs> but now in this match, I can say uh, with, with confidence that I, I understand what you guys were talking about. Several times in the course of this Codex match, I will just get absolutely destroyed. And uh, these guys will just shrug off my damage like it's nothing. Uh, and uh, I'll talk a little bit near the end of the video, after we actually finish with this Codex um, match. I'll talk a little bit about the spec that I'm using. Uh, this is the Dis B spec that I found on, uh, on uh, his blog. <clears throat> and uh, it is a... Uh, Seemingly very powerful spec. I, I think it is a powerful spec, uh, but I don't think I'm in the right place to actually utilize it. And I'll tell you about that at the end of the uh, at the end of the video. But for now, let's concentrate on the action that's going on, or or the lack of action that's going on. Um, I got killed so quick there, I wasn't even sure what happened. So I bring up the combat log. I'm like, eh, vex sanction. Okay, this is an inquisitor that uh, beat the crap out of me, I guess. Uh, but I'm taking huge amounts of damage and feeling completely uh, impotent. Uh, it doesn't help that we have a couple of guys who are kind of going AFK. Uh, one guy who's not respawning or something. I don't know how he's not respawning, but he's perpetually dead. And when he is alive, he's just standing there in the spawn. I don't really get it. I guess it's some kind of a favor scheme. Uh, so this is funny. I, I line of sight this guy, and I'm thinking I'm going to sneak up on him. And then he's just gone. <laughs> and I think he takes a look at me and he's like, this guy don't look so tough on his stupid old turtle. And uh, he just destroys me, just absolutely destroys me. Um, I'm not sure what he is. Is he a marksman? I see vampiric munitions on him. Uh, anyway, that's one thing that I really want to try to improve on is my, my ability to identify people based on the attacks that they're using or the damage icons that are coming up um, as I'm getting hit. Uh, it's something that I'm very, very bad at right now, and I want to try to get better at it. And uh, that was what I was doing early on when I went over to check and see what that uh, what had killed me before. I wanted to see what that was, uh, what class that was, so I could try to better recognize that in the future. So right here, I have no idea what I was doing. I think I was just sort of anxious. I knew that that rogue was there, and uh, I wanted to wait for some backup. Uh, so I faked like I was going to go across the bridge and then didn't. And this is really, really funny. There's three of us on this guy. And um, he just shrugs it off. And he goes immune somehow to my damage. I'm not sure how. And just destroys me in two or three hits. And that's pretty much uh, what I did this match. I just got destroyed in several uh, quick hits and uh, died very fast. And you see me again checking the combat log, and that's something that I'm trying to do more and more. Uh, I'm trying to look at the combat log, understand what killed me, what you know, what class it was coming from, how much damage it did, what type of damage it did, and just inform myself better. Just be better informed. Try to be a better player. And I'm also trying to learn this spec. Uh, I will talk about the spec at the end, like I've said a couple of times, uh, but um, until then, you can watch me try to utilize this spec. Uh, it, the idea behind this spec, as I said last week, is um, you're, you're, you're hitting several instant cast spells, and you're doing it in a window that is faster than healers can hopefully respond. Now, the 
The problem is, when I'm not dead, uh, the problem is I don't put out enough damage. Um, I don't have the gear to support the spec. Um, that's something that I'm going to uh, go over in depth later on. And I should really stop mentioning the fact that I'm going to go on, uh, go over it in depth later on because I've said it like three times now. Um, also, by the way, later on I'm going to cover my spec in depth. So there we go. It's a quad. I just did a quad and now I'm going to stop. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is pretty much how the match is going to end. They take our near point here. They take the statue and they, uh, they reinforce around the statue. And that's pretty much what happens. Um, they just camp it out and we just keep coming in waves and dying. And uh, you'll see here, look at his, his bleed ticking on me. 793, 391. Look at my, my stuff ticking on him. 58, 87, 58. This is the disparity between my damage output and the damage output of, uh, of my enemies. And that's why I'm finding it very difficult to actually get anything done. Uh, so, to all of you who said it's going to suck at 50, yes, finally it sucks. I understand what you're talking about, and I guess I'm just going to grind it out until I have the gear to actually... Uh, to actually do something. This guy right here is a good example. Now he has a, a good healer, uh, or probably a couple of healers who are uh, who are helping him out, but I unload everything into him. I get all the way through my rotation, I get my spells off, and I actually do a decent amount of, uh, of damage to him, and I, I take probably his entire life bar a couple of different times, um, but of course, uh, if you don't kill someone and you allow healers to heal them back up, they're going to live. <laughs> and uh, the idea behind this spec is a sound one in that you are trying to kill someone with burst damage, uh, but I'm not pulling it off. So uh, <clears throat> so you'll see just a massive battle here to end the game. Uh, you know, I think for my team, it just sort of became the sort of thing where they're like, okay, let's just get through this. Let's get back into the queue. Um, they forecapped us at one point. Uh, let's just have some fun, have a big battle, and uh, move on. And you can see we just can't quite... I wanted that kill right there so bad, I just could not get it. Uh, myself and the other mage who was trying for it just couldn't get it. And uh, that's pretty much the story of this whole game. I mean, there's a couple of stories of this game. Number one, I, I'm made of paper mache. And number two, I can't put out enough damage to kill anybody. If there is a healer or even a basic self-heal in the mix, uh, I can't do enough to kill pretty much anybody. There was that cleric finishing me off again. So uh, we're coming up here to the end of the battle. Um, they're going to just, I think they just get the four cap before the end here just to to rub it in and to make it a real crushing defeat. And uh, that is going to be that right there. Uh, it's all red four cap for the defiance as we... <sighs> We dip our heads in absolute shame at that. Um, this guy advises us to go outside and start your lives. I don't know exactly what that means, but okay. Uh, I did put out a decent amount of damage, you know, like fifth or sixth on my team, whatever. Um, I, I'm that's that's about as much damage as I would have put out as a necromancer, but it felt more uh, fluid, and I died a lot. So I did that damage in a much shorter amount of time. All in all, this game is what it is. It's a learning experience in that what it taught me was this spec may not be right for me. And I really wanted to, to point this out and, and, and what I'm going to do after this to, to show you guys that just because you can get a spec off paper doesn't mean it's developed for you or it's right for you. So let's talk a little bit about that right now. So now that that horrible game is done, we're going to move on here to lessons learned. But instead of doing a formalized lessons learned like we normally do, I'm going to show you some of the details of the spec and some of the lessons that I've learned about it. Uh, so the basics of this disc B spec, uh, this um, spark spec, I suppose you would call it. Uh, well, the number one basic is uh, spark. Uh, spark is the crux of the spec. You uh, use spark to reduce your global cooldown, which means that you can actually uh, cast instant cast spells at a very high rate. So uh, what you're doing in this spell, uh, this spec, is you're trying to beat the uh, healers, essentially, 
uh, with damage. You're trying to, to do more damage than a healer can can heal in, in, in as quickly a, a, a window, as small a window as possible. Uh, so the way that you do this is you ramp up with four basic spells. Uh, after those four basic spells, you kind of branch off into some different directions. Uh, if you get an opportunity proc, you may look to go towards a cinder burst or a fireball. If you don't, you may cast a full casting time fireball or uh, maybe do a draining bolt, something else to just pour on a little more damage until countdown ends, at which point you hope your target will fall below 30% so that you can finish them off with Inferno. Now, that hasn't really worked out for me, and the reason that it hasn't worked out is at rank 1, going against opponents that largely have rank 5 or above armor, uh, I really don't have the throughput of damage. I just don't put out enough damage to actually make the spec work. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to abandon the spec because of that, but I want to show you guys that, that what the spec does and, and why I like it. Uh, first of all, you can always move with this spec. You never have to stop unless you really just want to. Uh, if you want to stop to cast a fireball, you can, but you never have to. So here's the spec sort of at half speed, the spec, the rotation, sort of at half speed. And uh, I'll, I'll kind of just get you guys into the flow of it here. So I'm opening up with countdown to start the timer on that. Then I'm going to do some direct damage with flame bolt, then defile to eat charge, and then I'm going to hit dark touch. Right about now, my uh, there it is, my countdown finishes. And if I had gotten an opportunity proc, uh, that would have been the perfect time for a cinder burst. Then at the, at, at the impact of that cinder burst, hopefully that pushes the target down below 30%. Of course, as a training dummy, we're never going to get them down uh, past 30%. But uh, that's the basic idea. So one more full speed run through of the rotation. And again, the idea here is you can move as much as you want. And that's really, really good for PvP. Uh, so here we go. Countdown, Flame Bolt, Defile, Dark Touch. I'm going to throw in a Draining Bolt to try to get that opportunity. Still didn't get it. There goes my, uh, my Countdown. And that would essentially be where I should be in Inferno range. Uh, once that countdown hits, I should be able to immediately cast Inferno and kill a target. Uh, but that's not happening. And unfortunately, uh, that means that the spec isn't really going to work too well. So uh, I'm going to move away from the spec for now. I'm going to kind of keep it in the back. Uh, I'm going to file it, and uh, I'm going to give it a try a little bit later on. But uh, right now, I think I'm going to move to uh, more, of a, uh, more of a damage mitigation spec, something that can allow me to actually survive, something with some survivability. And uh, from there, I'll, uh, I'll slowly gear up, and at that point, I'll be able to pull off a spec like this. But this spec was designed by a rank 8 player, sort of as his parting shot to the community, uh, his last... Uh, his, his last sort of experimentation and uh, with his rank 8 gear I think he was able to pull this off me at rank 1 I just can't pull it off and uh, I wanted to show you guys this to let you know that uh, just because you find a spec on paper and it looks good and it plays well in a highlight video doesn't mean that you're going to be able to pull it off in your specific circumstances so being able to analyze that in action and actually see that hey you know this spec isn't going to work and to come to the training dummies and to just sort of measure your damage output and uh, look at everything that uh, that you can do with it and, and look at where uh, people of higher rank uh, are with it. You know, he was doing so much more damage with each of his individual abilities and he put himself in a position to, to really finish off an opponent. I just can't do that. Um, so until things change in terms of gear, I'm going to have to abandon this spec. I do appreciate you guys not abandoning me and following me over here to uh, Tales of Talara. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of bummed about TGN Rift closing down, like I said before in the intro, uh, but ultimately uh, I think it's going to be a, a great, great change for me. I feel revitalized, uh, even though I'm, uh, I'm not playing Rift as much as I once did. I still feel like I have a lot of fun at it. I really, really enjoy myself. And uh, I really, really want to keep this show going as long as I can. Uh, I'll talk some in the future about how long I think that is. Uh, because as I've said in some of my ramblings in the past, if you watch my sort of rambling vlogs that are here on the channel, uh, MMOs aren't forever. And uh, that's one of those sort of things um, that kind of actually, that's funny because um, I have a, a, a son, he's 18 months old, and 
And there's this series of books that is essentially designed to teach children that things aren't for aren't forever and that, you know, feet aren't for kicking and teeth aren't for biting. And uh, when I said MMOs aren't forever, it sounded like that should be one of those children's books because uh, we're reading him right now. Uh, diapers aren't forever. So uh, maybe I can get that published. Maybe I can uh, write MMOs aren't forever and get that fully illustrated and published. And uh, I can put that on the bookshelves. Uh, but in fact, MMOs aren't forever. Uh, we move on. I've moved on from from WoW. I've moved on from uh, Warhammer. I've moved on from every MMO I've ever played. And it will happen with Rift. Uh, but I want to do that uh, when when the time is right. I don't want to do that just because. I don't want to do that because I'm moving on to also play another MMO. Uh, I want to do that when I've exhausted the fun of the game. And I still haven't done that. And I hope a lot of you guys haven't either. So uh, as always, I really welcome your feedback and encourage it. And uh, I think that's going to do it for us as the snow starts to fall here in Sanctum. All right, guys. I have been Big Dave. And until next time, take it easy.